Hello, my name is Ashish Dhavle. I'm a postdoc in Ben Olwetsky's lab. He's a professor here at Harvard University and a local tennis legend. We're going to be talking today about a study we did with Yosuke Miyamoto and Maurice Smith on how the brain adaptively regulates trial-to-trial -trial variability. Why can't I hit those every time? Why indeed? It's because the neural activity that generates our actions is inherently variable. While in some cases you want to curse your unreliable brain, hitting your serve into the net will do that, trial-to-trial -trial variability can also be beneficial for you because it allows you to explore new actions. The serve-to-serve -serve variability in my game against Ashesh allows me to explore his weaknesses. Being rewarded for fast serves to his backhand will reinforce the activity patterns in my brain that produce those serves, making me more likely to produce similar winning serves in the future. This is effectively trial and error learning, and it is a fundamental component of how you learn many of your skills. The trial-to-trial -trial variability also ensures that you can adapt to changing circumstances, such as facing a new and unfamiliar opponent like Gerald here. It allows you to continue exploring action space and find solutions that uniquely work for the new situations, like serving to Gerald's forehand. So variability can be good for exploring action space, but bad if you want to repeat a rewarding action, meaning that it makes sense for the brain to regulate variability based on how well you've been doing. To explore this question, we needed an experimental paradigm where we could measure trial-to-trial -trial variability with high statistical power. Because this can require many trials, we trained rats in our high-throughput training system. We designed a simple four-limb task in which rats had to press down a 2D joystick around the target angle to get a water reward. Rats performed many hundreds of trials in a session and multiple sessions a day, allowing us to collect several millions of trials across our 10 subjects. To simulate a changing environment, we randomly changed the target angle every few days. Rats adapted their movement trajectories to the changing task demands. Zooming in now, we can see how individual trials were either rewarded or not. Remember, we're interested in understanding the relationship between performance and motor variability, measured as the variance across a moving five trial window. To simplify the analysis and to reveal a causal relationship between trial outcome and variability, we introduced probabilistic reward trials, where the reward was uncoupled from the rat's movement angle and delivered probabilistically. This allowed us to analyze how the outcome of a single trial affects variability. We found that when animals are rewarded on a trial, their variability in subsequent trials drops significantly. When the animal is not rewarded, variability increases. The effect of a single trial decays with a time constant of about five trials. This means that the rats are estimating how well they're doing by integrating recent trial outcomes in an exponentially weighted manner. But how is this running estimate of performance informing trial-to-trial -trial variability? By performing additional analyses that you can read about in the paper, we established that the brain sets variability as a nonlinear function of the recent reward rate. We call this function the variability control function. When you're doing well, it prescribes low variability. When a few trials later you're doing less well, it increases the variability and even more so when performance drops further. Next, we wanted to understand what the benefits of such a strategy might be. For this, we use reinforcement learning simulations to ask what the optimal variability control function would be for an agent solving our task. Interestingly, our simulations suggested that to obtain the most reward, an agent should follow a strategy very similar to the one our rats employed. However, the gain of the variability control function, which reflects the amount of exploratory variability you can regulate, was on average lower in our rats than in our simulations. While some rats had near optimal amount of variability, many had lower. Now, if trial-to-trial -trial variability is indeed an important part of improving performance, rats that regulate variability more should learn faster and accumulate more reward. This is indeed what we saw. There was a strong correlation between the gain of the variability control function 
and the rat's performance and also the degree to which they learned in our task, suggesting that the variability regulation is indeed an essential component of performance optimization. So, so far we've been discussing situations in which the reward landscape is uncertain. We don't know how our opponent will react to our serve. The rat doesn't know which angle is being rewarded. But in certain situations, we are certain of the outcome. And that's the situation when I'm playing somebody like Florian Engert, my good friend for 20 years. And whenever I play him, there's one thing that I know, and that's that his backhand service return will be borderline pathological. And so there's really no reason for me to explore and overreact to small changes in performance. I should just be hitting at his backhand. That is sad, but true. So the question is, do, does the brain take into account the uncertainty of the environment when it regulates variability? To explore this, we maintain the same target angle for our rats for several hundred sessions. Our simulations, much like our intuition, suggested that to be optimal, variability in the certain condition should be regulated less than when things are uncertain. And that's indeed what we saw in our rats. This allows us to conclude that the brain implements a sophisticated algorithm for regulating trial-to-trial -trial variability that optimizes performance and improves learning across a variety of different conditions. You can read more about the details of our study in the recent edition of Current Biology. But can we also talk about my forehand now, please? <laughs> Cut.